Hi, second graders. Welcome to our last week of school. Uh, this week, all of the teachers are sharing read-alouds with you. And my read-aloud is going to be a little bit different from some of the read-alouds we've done uh, over the rest of the year. I'm going to start a chapter book with you. The book is called Dragons in a Bag, and it's written by Zeta Elliott. You might remember that I mentioned uh, Dragons in, the, in a Bag as my IDR book when I was modeling, uh, monitoring, and wondering as I was reading way back in April. I only read some little snippets of the book to you then, and I'd like to read uh, starting at the beginning of the book to you. I will have other videos after this one where I'll continue to read the book. So if you enjoy it, you can uh, tune in for other videos of more chapters of Dragons in a Bag, or maybe you have access that you can read it to yourself. But without further ado, Dragons in a Bag by Zeta Elliot. It's dedicated to Marie, whose dragons are still in my bag. Chapter One. Mama strokes my cheek with her fingers before pressing the doorbell. I feel tears pooling behind my eyes, but I will not let them fall. Mama has enough to worry about right now. It's only for a little while, Jackson. I'll be back before you know it. I nod and look up at the peephole in the door. If I look down at my feet, the tears will fall and my nose will start to run and Mama will know I don't want her to leave me there. Mama's biting her lip and tapping her toe nervously. She presses the doorbell again, letting it ring longer this time. We both hear someone stirring and cursing inside the apartment. Mama laughs nervously and says, <laughs> Ma curses like a sailor sometimes, but she's a harmless old lady. She's fun too. You'll like her, Jax. I never knew I had a grandmother living in Brooklyn. Mama never mentioned her before. Sometimes Mama hides things from me, or that's what I let her believe. Mama thinks I don't know that our landlord's trying to get rid of us. She takes down the eviction notices he pins to our front door, but I still know what's going on. Today, Mama has to go to court. I want to go with her, but Mama wants to leave me here instead. A heavy body shuffles toward the door. Mama and I wait patiently at, till at least three locks are turned. The chain stays on and lets the door open just a crack. I cringe as a raspy voice asks, what do you want? And there's a picture that goes with this part. Mama smiles sweetly and places her palm against the door. She speaks slowly and politely. It's just us, Ma. I called this morning and told you we were coming. Remember? The woman behind the door barks at Mama. Of course I remember. You called and asked if you could leave the boy with me and I said no. The sweet smile on Mama's face doesn't budge. As if anything, it hardens. Mama tries to push the door open, but the chain's still on and my mysterious grandmother doesn't seem ready to move out of the way. Mama puts her other hand on the door frame and leans in so the woman on the other side of the door can see and hear just how desperate she is. It's only for a few hours, please, Ma. You're all he has. I step back and wonder if that's really true. I'm sure Vikram would let me stay at his house for a while. His parents like me and don't mind having me around. Mrs. Patel calls me a good influence. That's what the grown-ups who know me always say. But this mean old lady won't even open the door and give me a chance. If she doesn't want me around, that's fine by me but it's not okay with Mama. She's whispering to the woman behind the door, but her smile is gone now and there are tears shining on her cheeks. I want to hold Mama's hand, but instead I take another step back and hold on to the straps of my book bag. Mama's saying one word over and over again, please. I have never seen my mother beg anyone for anything, but it doesn't work 
because the door finally closes. Mama rests her forehead against it before wiping her eyes and turning to me. Let's go, Jax, she says wearily. I sigh with relief and take Mama's hand. Just as we start to walk down the stairs, I hear the chain slide and the door opens once more. One day, give me your word, Alicia, one day. Mama says, I promise, Ma. Then she pulls me back over to my grandmother's apartment. The door is open, but the lights are off and I can't see anyone inside. Mama gives me a quick hug and pushes me through the doorway. Before I can ask when she'll be back, Mama rushes down the stairs and is gone. Chapter two. I step inside the dark appoint apartment. Lock the door, boy, my grandmother growls. I look at the three locks on the door and decide just to flip the one closest to the knob in case I have to make a quick exit. Then I let my eyes adjust to the shadows before searching for my grandmother. The apartment smells musty, but it looks tidy. The living room has two big windows with heavy curtains that shut out the spring sunshine. I shrug off my book bag and set it down by the door. I figure if things don't work out here, I can always run away and hope the Patels will take me in. I am standing at what must be the dining room. There's a short hallway to my right, and I think my grandmother's voice came from that direction. Light spills into the hallway, and a moment later, I hear pots and pans clanging. I figure my grandmother must be getting ready to cook something, so I move over to the kitchen and stand in the doorway. My grandmother is wearing a purple velour housecoat that clashes with the orange and green wallpaper in the kitchen. The housecoat must be old because the fabric is worn thin at the elbows and around the butt area. I'm guessing my grandmother sits a lot, though she's standing at the sink, peering at in a cupboard that looks pretty empty. You hungry? She asks in a gruff voice. No, ma'am, I reply. Hm. Boys are always hungry, she mutters before taking a jar of peanut butter off the shelf. I watch as she grabs a knife from the dish rack and a loaf of bread from the top of the fridge. It looks like I'm getting a sandwich whether I want one or not. Her white hair shudders like an angry cloud as she smears peanut butter onto the bread, all the while mumbling. Her voice isn't quite loud enough for me to hear, so I figure she's not actually talking to me. I stare at the worn patch at the back of my grandmother's housecoat and wonder what her face is like. She hasn't looked at me yet, so I guess she's not curious about my face. I wonder if we look alike. Folks always tell me that I look like my mother. We have the same dark eyes, long eyelashes, curly eyebrows that creep across our faces like twin caterpillars. There's a box on the kitchen table that looks like it just came in the mail. It's about half the size of a shoebox and lots of colorful stamps surround my grandmother's address. But there's no name written on the box and no return address that I can see. I go over to the table to get a better look. I slip onto one of the chairs and examine the stamps. Most of them show birds and butterflies, but others have dinosaurs or lemurs on them. Where did this box come from? I ask. My grandmother grunts and says, <laughs> far, far away. She glances over at her shoulder and adds, I have an old friend in Madagascar. You know where that is? I don't look up, but I can feel her eyes on me. Something tells me that this is a test. Luckily, I know the answer. It's an island off the coast of Africa, I reply. She puts down the knife, for the first time turns to really look at me. I'm not sure what she sees, but when I look at my grandmother's face, I see an ordinary old woman who doesn't look anything like me or my mother. In fact, her eyes are murky blue-black color, and she doesn't have any eyebrows at all. She squishes up her face and says, Boy, what do you know about Africa? I wonder what she wants me to say. Geography is one of my specialties. I sift through all the facts in my head and say, Africa's a continent. 
uh, there are more countries in Africa than there are states in the Union. Madagascar is in southern Africa, off the east coast of Mozambique. She folds her arms across her chest and her elbows nearly poke through the velour housecoat. Well, 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 she says in a voice that lets me know she's impressed. I stare at the box so that my grandmother won't see that I'm annoyed. People never expect a kid like me to know anything about anything. I'm used to it, but it still bothers me sometimes. My grandmother turns back around and finishes making the sandwich. Your mama teach you about Africa? I shake my head, but then realize my grandmother can't see me. So I say, no ma'am, I taught myself. Then I add, there are lots of rare animal species that live on Madagascar. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? She replies with a short laugh. There's a picture that goes with this part. For the first time today, I start to relax. Maybe we do have something in common after all. I reach out my hand and turn the box so I can check the stamps on the other side. To my surprise, the box jumps. My mouth falls open, but I hide my surprise when my grandmother turns around and brings the sandwich over to the table. She sets the plate down and then eases herself into a chair. Eight, she says before shoving the plate closer to me. I'm not really hungry, but it's probably easier to just do as I'm told. I take half the peanut butter sandwich off the plate and keep my eye on the box. The peanut butter is thick, so it takes a long time for me to swallow just one bite. I glance over at my grandmother to see if her eye, and see in her eyes that she's laughing at me. You want a beer to wash that down, she says? Why don't you grab a bottle from the fridge? Beer? I'm nine years old. I figure I'll just go see what's inside the fridge and pour myself a glass of milk instead. I push back my chair and take three steps across the kitchen. I have to tug hard to open the fridge door, and the only thing inside is a wilting cabbage and a six-pack of root beer. Want one? I ask. Sure, she says. Why not? I grab two bottles and close the fridge door. That's when I notice the box has moved from the kitchen table to the counter. I didn't hear my grandmother make a sound, but the box is definitely out of reach now. I set one bottle of root beer in front of my grandmother and watch as she twists off the cap before taking a swig. Ah, nothing like cold root beer first thing in the morning. The clock on the wall reads 1120, but I don't tell my grandmother that. I just sit down, open my own bottle of root beer. I take a small sip and watch the box on the counter. I think I see it move, and move a fraction of an inch, but maybe my eyes are playing a trick on me. Maybe my grandmother just moved the box so I wouldn't get any peanut butter on it. Or maybe she doesn't want me to know what's inside. I feel my grandmother watching me, so I look down at my sandwich instead. I force myself to pick it up and take another bite. Not hungry, she asks. When I shake my head, she helps herself to the other half of sandwich. With her mouth full, she asks, Hey, Karee, boy. I nod, and she continues. Good. <clears throat> I've got plenty of books. No TV, but you can read any book that's in this apartment. We don't have a TV either, I tell her, happy to have discovered something that we have in common. Oh, yeah, she replies. I guess your mama didn't forget everything I taught her. I glance at the box again. This time, I'm sure I see it move. My grandmother gets up and suddenly puts the lid back on the jar of peanut butter before returning it to the cupboard. She slams the door shut and says, I need to make a phone call. When you're finished eating, just go in, in the living room and find yourself a book. Understand? Yes, ma'am. And quit calling me ma'am, she snaps. It's getting on my nerves. Sorry, grandma. I don't know if it's peanut butter or the strangeness of that word, but it almost makes me choke. I take a quick sip of root beer and look up to see my grandmother's shocked face staring at me. Boy, I ain't your granny. Now it's my turn to look shocked. What should I call you then, I ask. She grunts and pushes her chair in. What everyone else calls me, Ma.